Well, hello and welcome. I'm Cindy Daychuk with Queen Bee Creations. And, well, pretty obvious that this is the piece that we're gonna be working on. Um, it's a really solid, really well-made um, bedside table. I mean, I'm saying bedside table, you can use it in your home, wherever you want. It works equally well beside couches and things. Um, it's fairly, fairly boxy, fairly standard, um, nothing too remarkable about it, but I've been wanting to try um, a technique. So if you had seen, oh my goodness, a fall cornucopia, it was a finish that I made up on the tin cornucopia of the fall arrangement that I did just because the, um, <laughs> the other finish I wanted to do on the metal didn't work. So sometimes these things are happy little accidents, but I wanted to try it on a piece of furniture. And it's kind of this rusty textured sort of look. So for this piece, I think you'll end up making it look a little bit more, I'm gonna say industrial from the standpoint that it's going to look kind of rusty and it's going to have texture and roughness to it. So I think it will give it kind of an industrial look, I think, it still fits with kind of the more modern, square, clean lines of this. I think it could easily then work in, in kind of more a masculine um, kind of environment if you want it as a side table, either in um, your home, like in, in a living room, in a basement, as a bedside table. Um, so I think it'll have some flexibility. Or again, if it looks like what's in my head, it does. <laughs> haven't done it before that's usually what happens and I bring you along for the ride so couple of things this is the hardware that was on it which is not going to necessarily work for me and I don't have all the hardware anyway this is how pieces usually come to me that um, there's nothing wrong with the piece of furniture but people can't be bothered fixing the broken hardware so they get rid of it they buy new go figure but it's okay because if it comes to me instead of the dump, I get to fix it up and it gets new life. So love doing that. The first thing we're gonna do then is I'm going to take off this hardware and I'm going to fill all of the holes. I am going to change it from handles to just two drawer pulls. So I'm gonna to have to be re-drilling holes. I don't like where these holes sit, which is kind of up at the top half of um, this drawer, which I'm going to want it centered here. So my holes are here. So if you look here, I'm going to actually want my new handle pulls to be right about here. So none of these holes work for me. Sometimes if I want to switch it to pulls, I only have to fill one, but, um, on the drawers, there's actually a slight little line, an indent here where you see that there's kind of this lighter color going across the middle. I'm actually going to do the specialized treatment in the middle and not along the edges. So we're gonna have contrast, which means I need the pulls to go kind of in the middle of that new finish area. It'll make more sense as we go, but it does mean I need to fill this. I also like to, it's not necessary, but I also like to fill on the inside too. You're still gonna see where the wood filler is, but it's gonna be a nice smooth surface and you're not gonna have all these extra holes floating around in the back either. So as much as it needs a really good clean because you know people don't drop them off clean and it's been sitting in my shop which means it also gets, gets dirty and dusty in here, I'm gonna wait until after I've done the wood filling because then I'm gonna to have to be sanding it smooth and I'm gonna to have to be re-cleaning it anyway. I don't like to work harder than I need to. So I just take wood filler. So just basic, this is Elmer's wood filler. I just get it from Home Depot and you know, my handy dandy little, little, I need glasses for this. And we are just going to smooth this in. Now, what I want to do is have as much as the excess off as possible because it's less sanding. 
But where the hole is, I actually like it to be up higher than the hole and not perfectly smooth so that I can sand down toward the, the hole. And that way, I'm not gonna end up with an indent around it. So as much as I'll take off the excess around the hole, I'm gonna leave it raised where the hole is so that I can sand down to that hole. I hope that makes sense. So I'm just gonna get all of these holes filled. I am going to let them dry overnight. So this one requires me to do a little bit of waiting. I like it to be fully dry and then I will sand it smooth, wash it all down and then come back at you for some of the, the beginning painting. But I wanted you to know some of what took place before I could even get to the paint stage. And that's just the way it goes. But the, the, the plan for hardware starts before you paint. So I had to take a look at, do these handles work for me or not? If not, am I replacing them with pulls? So another kind of handle. What's the distance between the holes? Do I have something like that in my stash? Do I need to go and purchase something else? Always on old pieces, make sure that the distance is, if you're purchasing something else, make sure the distance is a really common distance. On really old pieces, I mean, this is pretty new, so not an issue, but really old pieces, sometimes the distance is um, not common anymore. So you may be hard pressed to find hardware. So if that's the case, you need to know right from the start so you do your, your whole filling at the beginning not after you've gone through and done all your specialized finishing. It, it makes you cry later if you can't find poles and you gotta start over. Now that I have my drawers filled, I've got them sanded, these are all ready to go. I need to put my base coat onto the furniture. I'm gonna be doing the treatment over top, so you know, as much as there's going to be some areas that I'm going to cover over the black, so this is a little black dress from DIY that I'm going to use, it just makes sense to paint the whole thing, and um, then I'll tape off what I don't need. So I am going to get two coats. I'm not going to need more than that because this is already a dark color, but I'm going to get two coats of little black dress on all of the drawer fronts and uh, the body of the dresser, and then um, we'll come back and start getting things going on, adding some of the details, some of the fun stuff. So this is just straight paint. I've got two coats of paint on here and it's dried entirely. It's important because I'm now looking at taping off. And these drawers, let me just see if you can see see that outline right where it's all kind of engraved i'm using that as my guideline but i'm not going to worry about doing the curved in on the edges right like these edges arc in i'm just going to square it off because the treatment that i'm doing is going to add texture to it. so it's going to hide that but those lines just make it a heck of a lot easier to be able to follow, to be able to get a nice squared off edge. So I am going to do this for each of the drawers. And in essence, what we're gonna have then is that the black is going to be kind of our border. And we're gonna do this treatment in the center of each drawer. I'm gonna do the same around the edges of each of the sides and on the top. So we're gonna add a textured top to it because, because I wanna, <laughs> because I can. So I'm gonna get all this taped off, make sure that all the edges are pushed down nice and tight. And then I'm gonna come back at you when we start to add our center coat. For this finish, we're gonna make this look kind of rusted and kind of crusty. So to do that, I've got four colors from DIY. I have layered chocolate. I have Summer Crush. Hang on, let me just check and verify that that's what that is. Yes, Summer Crush, which is kind of like a, um, a muted pumpkin color. So it's not a really bright in your face orange. It's, it's darker. 
um, Wolf 57 and Pennies from Heaven Copper. And the idea with this, I just have an old chip brush, get any kind of, you know, kind of crusty old brush, is I'm gonna be dabbing my colors on. And I'm just using the same brush. So don't worry about, you know, keeping things separate or different or you're just going to dab and you're just adding colors where you want where you think and creating some patterning in there and just go for it the other thing that i do have is just a blank plate you could use a, a, a cloth, whatever, just to kind of clean off my brush a little bit so I can um, kind of start fresh if it starts getting a little bit too muddy. But you're just kind of adding some color where it kind of makes sense. And because I want this to contrast with my black, I'm gonna have a little bit more blue and a little bit more orange in it than I did in the video that I had done of the um, that cornucopia, right? I'm gonna want a little bit more of that, a little bit more of the copper kind of highlighting through there a little bit. So, just so that we've got a little bit more of that contrast color happening. And it doesn't look like much. It's gonna look super cool when we pull it off when we have that contrast with um, the rest. But I also kind of turn the brush to get a little bit of, you know, color sweeping up there. I have it sort of moving in different places. Just, you know, you just get to have fun and kind of be pouncing and playing with it where it makes sense to you, where it just kind of looks like it would be good. And I turn my brush around every so often just so that I could have the colors alternating in different directions. And you just have it kind of working however you want. Just make it look all sort of modeled. And that's kind of what it looks like. Once these are painted, I like taking the tape off fairly soon. I don't wait for it to fully cure. It just tends to um, come off easier. And I also like to pull it toward the painted surface. So if some of the paint is still a little bit wet, pulling it toward the painted surface is going to keep any of the wet paint toward that wet surface rather than dragging it toward um, the edge that I don't want it to be on. So you can see that this looked kind of shaky with the green tape around it. Um, but as soon as we start pulling this off, it looks pretty darn cool, right? So that's the kind of look that we ended up getting with that technique, which I think is awesome. Now, I am going to wait for this to dry fully and then I will take a really fine brush in black just to clean up any of the edges that aren't quite perfect. And that's to be expected because we had that little groove. So you get some of that bleeding of the paint down into that groove, might not be sitting exactly where you want it. So just a little bit of a touch up is all that it needs to do that. I have over here some kind of basket weave oh these are gonna be be hard to open up kind of a basket weave sort of um, bronzy kind of toned knob that I'm gonna be drilling holes in what I want to do is wait and see when I seal the piece how they look against it and whether or not I need to touch up the hardware so that's always a possibility that the hardware just doesn't quite match enough 
and therefore I may take some of my copper paint um, and just kind of get them to kind of fit in a little bit better. But I want to wait and see when the paint is all sealed because that's going to darken it up a little bit and see what these look like against it. So I'll open up the packet and do that. Right now, all that I'm doing, here's the, the top of our dresser and the sides, which look pretty awesome. So just kind of a fun technique. I'm going to wait for these to dry and seal them up. I'm going to be using clear wax from DIY and uh, I'll come back at you about hardware and stuff, but I'm pretty pleased with how it's looking. I hope you guys like it too. What I decided with the hardware is that they were just a little too much of a contrast. I wanted something that blended in. So I do have Rust-Oleum metal accents and this is in um, a bronze, I think is what they call it. And all that I'm doing is taking a makeup sponge, <laughs> dipping it in, and this stuff seals, so that's why I've got a piece of plastic that I put over the top. And I'm just dabbing it all over the top to just kind of dull it down. So rather than the bright shiny, having it a little bit more of the bronze color kind of fits in with the um, browned kind of copper. The copper itself would be too bright. I'll show you the difference in a pic. This is the waxed surface, so just clear wax on this. And you can see the difference between this kind of shiny metallic color and this is our bronzed color. So you can see how much better that blends in with the piece because a lot of our copper is kind of dulled down because of being on the brown itself. You could go the bright shiny copper, but I think I like it being a little bit deeper and a little bit darker. So it just kind of blends in and doesn't contrast as much as this. Before I look at attaching any of the hardware, I do want to take the opportunity without knobs being in the way to be able to buff up this piece. It's had overnight for the wax to set up. Now, you can just take a buffing brush, you could take a paper bag to be able to do this. Um, when I've got nice flat surfaces, I like to take advantage of that and not work harder than I need to. I'm getting old, muscles are tired. So I just have this little Milwaukee um, buffer. If I've got a really large piece, then I will get out the big car buffing pad, which I think is a Simon Eyes, um, but this works. just perfectly to be able to buff that up smooth. So I'm gonna get all of this buffed and then I'll come back at you and give you a couple of tips on how to uh, get good hole placement on the drawers and make your life a lot easier. All right, when it comes to attaching hardware, there's a couple of little things that just make life easier. One is to check the size of your screws. So before you start drilling, and where did I put my drill? Here we go. I want to check to make sure that the size of the bit that I'm drilling with is, first of all, going to be big enough. And secondly, that it's not too big, just so that I don't have to drill twice. So I usually just take an old piece of wood that I test everything on. So I tested burn markers and everything. I'll drill a hole and then I'll insert my screw to make sure that it actually fits into the hole so that I'm only having to drill once. The other thing that I do is there's nothing that, that's worse than having drawers that stack up on top of each other like this one and having the knobs out of alignment. And I don't know about you, but as much as I could take a ruler and I could mark and I could put my little dot and I could do the same thing, it's going to be off. So what I do is I create a template. And I just take a piece of packing paper, create it to the size of my drawer so that I can lay it on top. And I always write the word top on it so that I always make sure it's going exactly the same way. And I measure that. So then when I lay it over top, I take a punch put it into the exact spot, right? 
right on my ax. And I hammer a hole in. So I punch a hole into my piece so that I know exactly where to drill. The, the other thing that that does is it also gives a starting part point for my drill so that my bit fits into that hole really nicely and it's not going to slide and mar the surface of my drawer. Make sense? After you've done all this, especially a specialty finish like this, you don't want to start, you don't want to have to start patching it or fixing it because your drill bit slipped. So all that I do is that I'm going to be able to fit that tip of that drill bit right into that hole, drill all the way through. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to get my hardware attached and then this baby is done. So I'll come back at you, let you see the finished product and uh, we'll go from there. Here's our little dresser all finished. Now, I certainly could have put black knobs on, but I really wanted knobs that more disappeared than stood out. I think there's enough black on the piece, but black would have worked. Black, like a, a matte black contrast would have been fine on this piece. I added more blue into this piece than I did if you saw the cornucopia that kind of started this whole finish off. Um, but that's more just because this was on a piece of furniture and I wanted this to have a bigger contrast. I wanted to stand out more. Um, whereas on the cornucopia, I was really going for just kind of a rusted finish. So it was, um, more of the browns and the, and the orange and the, and the, um, copper in there. But I like how it turned out. I like having the contrast to the finish so that again, you know, we've got it on the top. We've got it on the sides so that it's got, uh, it's kind of funky, kind of different, but it could still be fairly conservative. But it's, it's kind of a piece that goes into um, industrial, it could be steampunk, it could, it could just be, um, you know, in a den. It could kind of fit in to a lot of different decor because it doesn't sit firmly in any one area. Let me know what you think of this one, guys. Love to hear your comments and your thoughts on this. If you were there for the cornucopia, then, you know, and you were voting for trying it out on a piece of furniture, then this one's for you. And otherwise, thanks for joining me on the journey. Check out queenbeecreationshome.com. Love it if you did. Like and share, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.